The first step, don't be anxious. Nature controls it all. The second step, concentrate on what you have to do. Fix your eyes on it. Remind yourself that your task is to be a good human being. Remind yourself what nature demands of people. Then do it, without hesitation, and speak the truth as you see it. But with kindness. With humility. Without hypocrisy. Don't be overheard complaining. Not even to yourself. Do not be perturbed, for all things are according to the nature of the universal, and in a little time you will be nobody and nowhere. True good fortune is what you make for yourself. Good fortune, good character, good intentions, good actions. Let not your mind run on what you lack as much as on what you have already. Objective judgment, now, at this very moment. Unselfish action, now, at this very moment. Willing acceptance, now, at this very moment, of all external events. That's all you need. How ridiculous and how strange to be surprised at anything which happens in life. You're subject to sorrow, fear, jealousy, anger, and inconsistency. That's the real reason you should admit that you are not wise. Almost nothing material is needed for a happy life, for he who has understood existence. Receive wealth or prosperity without arrogance, and be ready to let it go. For God's sake, stop honoring externals, quit turning yourself into the tool of mere matter, or of people who can supply you or deny you those material things. As the same fire assumes different shapes when it consumes objects differing in shape, so does the one self take the shape of every creature in whom he is present. A man when he has done a good act, does not call out for others to come and see, but he goes on to another act, as a vine goes on to produce again the grapes in season. Is any man afraid of change? What can take place without change? What then is more pleasing or more suitable to the universal nature? And can you take a hot bath unless the wood for the fire undergoes a change? And can you be nourished unless the food undergoes a change? And can anything else that is useful be accomplished without change? Do you not see then that for yourself also to change is just the same and equally necessary for the universal nature? Receive without pride, let go without attachment. When you have assumed these names, good, modest, truthful, rational, a man of equanimity, and magnanimous, take care that you do not change these names, and if you should lose them, quickly return to them. I have often wondered how it is that every man loves himself more than all the rest of men, but yet sets less value on his own opinions of himself than on the opinions of others. Be content with what you are, and wish not change, nor dread your last day, nor long for it. Consider that before long you will be nobody in nowhere, nor will any of the things exist. That you now see, nor any of those who are now living. For all things are formed by nature to change and be turned and to perish in order that other things in continuous succession may exist. In a word, if there is a God, all is well, and if chance rules, do not also be governed by it. So I look for the best and am prepared for the opposite. Treat whatever happens as wholly natural, not novel or hard to deal with, but familiar and easily handled.